Hey guys, I'm back. So um, today I'm going to be teaching you how to solder and some common misconceptions about soldering. But first, you will always need a fan. And why do you need a fan? It's because the fumes. Now here's some common misconceptions about the fumes. The fumes contain no lead. If the, if the soldering iron is below 800 degrees Fahrenheit, there will be no lead in the fumes. If it's above 800 degrees, lead particles will atomize in the fumes, but the fumes are not made solely of lead. So this is why it is absolutely necessary to run your soldering iron below 800 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise lead will be in the fumes and you can get brain damage from this. Now, what the fumes actually are is the flux inside the solder boiling off. And these fumes are not harmless, you know, even though there's no lead in them. The fumes actually contain um, flux, boiled flux, that can give you asthma. Soldering is one of the leading causes of occupational asthma, and you don't want asthma. So that's why you need a fan, and just a simple PC fan will do. Now, to clean your soldering iron, you either need a sponge, a brass sponge like on the top, or a regular, you know, like a sponge on the bottom. And a brass sponge, you just stab the sponge with the iron, and a regular sponge, you just swipe it across, and this will remove all the gunk from it. And now on my particular soldering iron, a Velman VTS, 5.5 or SS5, you want the dial right where it is. Otherwise, if it's too high up to the max, iron will heat above 800 degrees and put lead particles in the fumes. And if it's below that, um, it won't be hot, it won't have enough thermal mass to solder. So really, I can't tell you what exact temperature because this is a wattage control. But um, as you can see, you just want to stab the uh, brass sponge with the iron to clean it. So I can't tell you exactly where to put the knob, but for my particular iron, I leave it there. So, um, and you do need to clean the iron every time before you use it, okay? It's very important every time before you use it and after you use it. Um, and so right now I'm just going to show you uh, just soldering onto one of these uh, Vero board thingies. As you can see, I have my fan right next to it, just to, you know, any old PC fan will do. And so um, I'm just going to be really showing you how to solder. So I'm going to be soldering one of these DIP8 packages. This is actually a um, graphic display filter. Um, for a project that I'm doing. And this is only a through-hole soldering tutorial, by the way. Um, I will link some good soldering tutorials in the description so that you can um, see some people that are better at soldering than me that can teach you how to solder SMD and that have a more complete and detailed soldering description. So um, I just have this piece, um, a printed circuit board in um, a third hand. And what I've done is I've put this DIP8 package in and um, I've actually bent over the two opposite pins. I bent them inwards. Uh, it's kind of difficult to see on camera. Um, camera doesn't pick it up very well. But I've actually bent them inwards just a bit. And this is just to, to make the IC stay in. Basically, whenever you're putting a component into a board, you just want to sort of bend the leads opposite. So if it's like an eight uh, dip eight package like this, you can see those um, pin on the top left and the bottom right are bent inwards. So that's because they're opposite pins. Um, you can see it here. And that's just to hold the package in. If it's a resistor, you want to bend the leads outward. I'll show soldering a resistor later. So um, a DIP8 package is really uh, simple to solder, but you need the right kind of solder. I use a 5737 mix of, um, or 5747 mix of um, lead and um, tin, 5710, uh, 47 lead. And as you can see, the flux core is there. The flux is absolutely necessary for soldering because it removes the surface tension of the solder and it's a weak acid so it eats away at any oxides because you can't solder onto oxides, you can solder onto bare metal and metal will oxidize and it oxidizes faster when it's hot. So when you're soldering, even if your metal is perfectly clean, you still need flux because it will oxidize when you put your soldering iron on it. Okay, and also it removes the surface tension of solder, which lets the solder flow very easily, because normally without flux, solder has a higher surface tension, and you want the solder to flow easy. It makes your job easier. Now, um, for this, I'm just using a regular conical-shaped circular tip, basically, a normal tip that comes with your soldering iron, and that's fine. You can use any type of tip you want. It, this is really a personal preference. Um, but you, you want to use a large tip. Don't use those tiny little tips that they say you need to get precision work. You can go with a tip that's actually even slightly larger than the pad you're soldering because so solder has surface tension, and so it'll actually go to that pad. So what I'm doing is I'm actually just putting some solder on the tip, and this aids in heat transfer because if I hit the, touch the tip, 
you can't really see it there because my thumb's in the way. But if I touch the tip to the pad, and I want to touch the tip to the pad and the pin, you can see it here. And the solder just makes sure that both of them are receiving heat because both of them have to be heated up to solder. And then I just stick some solder behind, um, behind where the soldering iron is. So one side of the pin, there's a soldering iron, and the other side, there's a solder. And I just touch the pin to both the um, pad and the pin. Um, and this makes sure that they both receive solder and the solder flows correctly. And I don't need to, this is another common mistake, is you don't need to keep the iron on these pins for very long. You see I'm keeping it on the pins for two or three seconds at most. Also, you can see I'm not adding very much solder. In fact, those um, top two pins on the right and the bottom pin on the right, those have too much solder. Some good examples are the two pins on the bottom. Those are the amount of solder you want. And your connections, they should look um, very shiny and very smooth. Um, that's what you, that's how you know you make a good connection unless you're using lead-free solder, which I don't recommend, by the way. Leaded solder is perfectly fine. So now I'm going to put in this capacitor or resistor. It has two leads, and so capacitors and resistors are the same, and they have two leads. And it's a capacitor, by the way. I just saw it. So um, basically, I'm going to bend each lead in the opposite direction. This just ensures the component doesn't fall out of the um, um, Vera board while I'm actually soldering it. And... Um, so that's important. Like I was saying earlier, you do need to tin the tip just slightly. You don't need to put globs of solder on. Don't put globs of solder on. Very little solder is actually necessary. And this is another good tip is that you need thin solder. Don't get that thick solder because then you can't control how much you put on and you put too much on. And so you tin the tip with just a little bit of solder and you touch the tin tip to both the um, pad and the um, leg of the component, and this ensures they both get heated up. Then you put the solder, then you take the actual solder, and you touch the pad and the leg of the component, and this ensures they both get enough solder. And you want enough solder to make just a small fillet right there. It's perfect, um, and, it, and it should be shiny. And um, so that's an, a very common mistake, is that you add too much solder. As you can see, you, I touch, um, this is just soldering nothing right there, but touching the, the pad and the, um, with, with the solder, it just shows how it flows very easily. Solder loves to flow. So you can see right there, that's all the solder it took to actually solder that um, leg of the capacitor to the um, pin. And um, it's really simple. And so that's really all soldering is. You really, I, I can give you these tips, but really what you need to do is you need to go out there and practice because yes, soldering is fun once you get it and it's easy. And you can see that um, I've cleaned my tip which is necessary. I can't stress enough how much cleaning your tip is, how much not adding too much solder, and not having the iron on the joint for too long. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.